Next up, uh, next concept is flux through a closed surface. So let's say we have a closed surface, something like perhaps this. Okay. Uh, let's say we have a uh, looks a triangular box. Looks something like this. Being a closed surface means it has an inside and an outside. It's got a wall right there. We can't see that face of it. And there's a can't see that edge of it. Uniform electric field going in like this. It goes into this box and it goes right through it and it actually comes out right there. Those are the points where it emerges from the box. Like that. So it's entering this closed box and it's leaving the closed box and uh, uh, and there's more lines, which I, I don't want to draw too many lines to make this too messy. But there would be more lines like back here going in right there, going in at that point and coming coming out that point. Uh, but I, just, I don't want to draw too many of them to make it too confusing. This is a closed box, and the A vector or the DA vector always points to the outside. Uh, which way is the DA vector at? this point right there on our box. Go ahead and point in that direction that you think it is. Which way is the DA vector pointing? It points out of the box and it points perpendicular to the surface. So here's my little DA right there. It points perpendicular to the surface. There's my DA vector. So you can tell the angle right here. I've got an angle theta right there. Now is that angle less than or greater than 90 degrees? That is less than 90 degrees. So is my cosine of something less than 90 degrees going to be positive or negative? It's positive. So if you think about how cosine varies, cosine theta. Starts off at 1, it goes to 0 up to there, and then it goes to negative 1. So it's going to be a positive flux. It is out of the box out of box. But how about right here? Which way is the DA vector point right there at this surface? And we're like we're like looking through the sidewall here. But at this surface, again to be out of the box, I'm going to use green again, it's got to be pointing that away. There's my DA vector right there, representing a little teeny infinitesimal uh, piece of area right there. What's the angle we're looking at there? 180 cosine of 180 is negative, so this is causing a negative flux over here where it's going into the box. So in summary, anytime you go into a closed surface, the flux, the electric flux is negative. If you go out of a closed surface, the electric flux is positive. Now, here's a question right here. What is the net flux for this entire surface? And we really can appeal to the water analogy. If every time a stream of water goes in, it's negative, and every time the stream of water goes out, it's positive, and this is just a continuous flow of water. We're not starting or stopping the flow. Just like we you know, put this box into a, uh, an electric field, we don't change the electric field. We're not doing that yet. Just keeping a constant electric field. Even though it may not be uniform, it's just staying in time. It's staying the same at all times. Um, what would you guess, even without doing any calculations, is the net flux of water, which is the same as for electric fields, for this entire closed surface. If you said the net flux is zero, you're right. Because whatever stream of water goes in is just going to come out later. It's, this, this box is not trapping any water. If you had like a bucket, you might have a net flux into it because it can't get out. But a surface like this and with electric fields, if, or if this was a screen for water, whatever water goes in also goes out. That is a net flux of zero. Uh, so. In other words, whatever goes in is also going out. The net flux here, the flux for this closed surface is going to equal zero because whatever streams of water go in are also going to go out.
Okay. Now, how about this? Let me ask you this question. What if I had a sprinkler system? And I'm going to, uh, basically, here's a sprinkler right here. And a sprinkler is a source of water flow. And let's say the water is flowing out like this. It's flowing out in all directions. Okay, there's, now what is that actually in terms of fields? That's the field caused by what kind of a charge? A uh, positive point charge. So yeah, it's just like a sprinkler. Now, first of all, I'm gonna show you a surface. Now, when we're talking about surfaces using Gauss's law, truly, we are talking about surfaces that are simply geometrical. Now this is a spherical surface. I'm only drawing a circle there. This is a spherical surface. What's there? Now in our little analogy, there's a screen there. When we talk about Gauss's law, there's nothing there. It's just a geometrical surface that we are proposing in space. You don't have to have any actual object there. For our water analogy, it's a screen. For Gauss's law, truly, it's just a geometrical spherical surface. Uh, would you guess this is a positive flux or uh, negative flux for this situation. Spraying out of my imaginary surface that with the water would be made of a screen. Positive thumb up, negative thumb down. What would you guess on this flux? If you said, yeah, that's a positive flux, phi E is positive for that surface, you'd be right. Now here's the next question. If instead I had this surface here, it's a smaller area. It is a smaller area of surface. Would you guess my flux would be greater for this small surface, less, or the same? Go ahead and vote on that. What's your intuition for, and if you think about it in terms of water flow, how many gallons are coming out of this big sphere per second versus how many gallons are coming out of this smaller sphere per second? If you are understanding this right, it's the same flux. Now you may say, well, because like if a gallon, if all these streams add up to a gallon per second coming out of that source, which is, you know, for fields, that would be a point charge. Um, if a gallon per second is coming out of here, how much is going through this, this smaller sphere? A gallon per second. How much is getting out of this bigger sphere? A gallon per second. Notice that I'm not trapping any water. I'm not stopping any water from flowing. It's the flux is the same everywhere. Now you may ask yourself, how is it possible that the flux, when we look at the, the real meaning of flux, flux being the integral of E dot dA, how is it possible that the flux is the same for this big one, which when you integrate like all the area, wouldn't the bigger one have a bigger area? Yeah, it would. In fact, if I doubled the radius, how much bigger would the area of this big sphere be? If I doubled the radius compared to this little sphere, double the radius, I would have how much more area? Hold up that number. Doubling the radius gives you, and you got you definitely got to know your volume and uh, area formulas, uh, the, what is the area of a sphere? We're going to need that big time for this. Four thirds pi r cubed is the volume of a sphere. What's the area of a sphere? 4 pi r squared. So if you double the radius, you are four times in the area. So you might say, well, this is, when I integrate you know, with the a's, it's going to get bigger. So why isn't the flux for this bigger area bigger? Because what's happening, and now let's switch back to E fields, what's happening to the strength of the E field as I get farther out? Look at those field lines. They're getting farther apart. So even though when you integrate this, for the smaller sphere, uh, and we're going to have, it's going to be the same everywhere on the sphere. The sm smaller sphere, I'm going to have a stronger field and a smaller area. But for the bigger sphere, what is going to be uh, different? What's, how does the field different out here at the bigger sphere? Is it weaker, uh, thumb down, or stronger, thumb up? Is the field weaker or stronger there? It is weaker. See how these field lines are farther apart? So it's a weaker field, but I've got a bigger area. Notice that for both of these, 
the flux is the same for both. And it's for the water analogy, it works perfectly because the amount of gallons per second that are coming out will be the same for both. What we've seen here is a positive flux. How would we get a negative flux? Well, let's, instead of a, this is like a source, like a sprinkler, a source of water, water shooting out of it. If you wanted to have a negative flux, guess what you would have there? Instead of a source, you would have a, any guesses? Like what is, instead of water issuing out of something, what does water all rush into? A drain. A drain would look something like this. I would have field lines or lines of water going into it, right? That is what a drain would look like, and that would be what we'd call a, and let me draw my uh, imaginary surfaces. Again, these surfaces, that there's nothing where I'm drawing this spherical surface. We're just making a geometric surface there. But this is, in this case, we have a negative flux. It is a drain. It's negative here. Now, guess what kind of charge we're actually uh, going to, if we put it inside a box or a sphere, guess what kind of charge we need to get a negative flux? What kind of charge would I need to have right there to have the field lines go into it? A negative charge will create a negative flux on this spherical surface. And you guys, there doesn't, this, is, this surface is not a charged surface. It's not a metal surface. There's nothing there. It's just a geometric surface that we're dealing with.